it's Chahara. Welcome back to my channel. We are going to talk about the book I just finished today. It took a little longer than it should have because I was sick for about a week. Maybe a little bit longer. And I was in pain and I didn't want to read. And I, well, I wanted to read, but it's hard to explain. But I finally finished. It was so good. Um, it's called Hocus Pocus and the All New Sequel. A lot of people don't even know it exists. Um, at least I don't think a lot of people know that it exists. Um, but I didn't even know it exists until I was looking around Barnes & Noble like I did back when I lived five minutes away from Barnes & Noble. Probably less because I could walk there. I, yeah, it was less. I walked there for like like two minutes three minutes my best friend and i would just walk there because we both live next to it and yeah it was awesome we basically lived there but i found this book and i i, I have a lot of books because i buy a lot more than i have time to read so i'm gonna be reading a lot more since i feel better and um so i bought this a while ago finally read it i'm not big on standalone novels and I think that's why it took me so long. The only reason why I did decide to try this is because I love the movie so much and it was amazing. Um, they add some things you didn't know about. Like the Sandersons had a sister who was actually good that no one really talked about. Um, but the first half is actually about the movie and it's exactly like the movie actually. Like, here's a scene from the movie. It's pretty much exactly like the movie, the first half of the book. Just about word for word. Um, Give me that vial, said Winifred. Max held it over his head. Put her down or I'll smash it. Smash it, says Winifred, and she dies. Allison called his name and tried to run over to him, but Billy pulled her back. He's got a plan, Billy whispered to her, I think. I don't remember if he actually said that. That might have actually been one of the very, very few things they changed or added. I think I don't remember him saying that. Did he say that? Did he say that? I remember him pulling her back. And I think he said something like no, but I didn't think he said he's got a plan. I think I don't know. I'm not. I just we I just watched this movie not that long ago too before I read this book. And huh? Okay, I don't remember now. Um, but then Max flared at Winifred. She said she would kill his sister if he broke the bottle, but he knew that he handed it over. She'd just kill her anyway. Slowly sucking out Danny's life force in front of him, just like Binks had told him they had done to his poor sister Emily. He couldn't be the one to sentence his own sister to that, but he could do it to himself. So it adds a little things like that, like Max thinking it through, because, you know, books can get more in depth than movies can. But yeah. Um... But the second half is 25 years later. Max and Allison has a, um, I almost said sister, what? No, daughter um, named Poppy. And she, and they told her her entire life about this, um, about their story. She never really believed it though. Of course, that's what causes all the drama in this book. Her uh, non-belief, just like Max's non-belief caused all the drama in the first book. In both, see, I, that's what I keep saying. Not believers are gonna get the rest of us killed <laughs> because, but it's us believers that are gonna save every all the non believers because we know enough about this, right? Am I right? So we have some believers out there. Okay, moving on. But, um, so she has a best friend named Travis, who um is the only person she's ever told her secret to. And um, she's never a fan of Halloween be, um, because of um, her parents. Who do, her Allison used to love Halloween, but now she hates it because of what happened. Or she doesn't hate it, she's just cautious now because she knows the truth. But yeah, um, Max never really liked Halloween. This just caused him to hate it even more. <laughs> and then, um, and I'm not sure about Danny, but um, Poppy um, has a crush on this girl named Elizabeth. Uh, how is it Elizabeth? No, 
Elizabeth is the same as the sister. No, Isabella. Um, and um, Isabella has been hanging around with her and Travis a lot this past year, and they don't know why. Or at least um, Poppy doesn't know why. She doesn't know why the most popular, most beautiful girl at school when they're hanging around with a couple of losers, because they that's how they kind of seen at school. Um, Travis thinks, Travis knows about Poppy's feelings for Isabella, and he never says anything, but I think he kind of figures that she feels the same way. Okay, anyways, um, I shipped them though, Poppy and Isabella, they're so cute together. <laughs> um, but, uh, um, but it's on Halloween, obviously, and, um, Max refuses to talk about Sarah's sisters. Isabella did try to bring up the Elizabeth fact. You find out later on because she found out that her Elizabeth is actually an ancestor of hers. That's why um, she got so curious about Elizabeth. But uh, she probably ends up telling Isabella about um, um, everything. But the mean girl at school, um, Katie, uh, overhears and decides to use it against um, Poppy. Turns out she's the daughter of um, one of those guys in the movie um, who was being mean to Max and then was kind of just left at the witch's house. Like Max just went out with his shoes and not them. Um, yeah, one of them. I think it's the guy with blonde hair. I might be wrong, but by the way they describe um, Katie, I think that's who it was. Okay. Um, but, um, so they were at a Halloween party when, uh, and, oh, uh, Allison kept talking about this blood moon that is, um, makes all, which you need to be extra cautious around the blood moon, which is tonight, Halloween, of course, um, which makes it more spiritual, I guess. It's like, how do, how do I explain it? Like. Can I find what she, how she explained it? Like, I probably won't be able to find it. I'll read you the back. Shortly after moving from California to Salem, Massachusetts, Max Dennison finds himself in hot water when he accidentally releases the coven of witches, the Sanderson sisters from the afterlife. Max's sister and his new friends, human and otherwise, must find a way to stop the witches from carrying out their evil plan and remaining on Earth to torment Salem for all eternity. 25 years later, Max and Allison's 17-year-old daughter Poppy finds herself face to face with the Sanderson sisters in all her sinister glory. All their sister sinister glory. When Halloween celebrations don't quite quite go as planned, it's a risky time Poppy and her friends fight to save her family and all of Salem from the witches' light, latest vile scheme. Okay, but pretty much, Isabella brings um, a spirit board and. <laughs> Poppy, Isabella, and Travis decide to go to San Francisco's house and talk to ghosts. At first they do um, talk to a ghost, a friendly ghost. He said he's not a Sanderson and you find out who it was later on because he was trying to warn them. But um, a bunch of weird stuff starts happening, obviously. And then they hide as three people walk in. Turns out it was uh, Max, Allison, and Danny. And they obviously get really mad because they warned her about all this. But the three of them disappear as the sisters come. Turns out that the spell, the spell book tricked, or after they stopped talking to the friendly ghost, they talked talk to an evil ghost, one of the Santa sisters who tricked them into saying the spell from their book, that um, which was just discovered because it was missing for the last 25 years. Um, but Isabella woke up and it was there that morning, which is just a little weird. But they end up getting tricked into saying a spell that puts, it's like, I don't remember exactly what the spell is called, but it's like a replacement spell. They, a transfer spell, something like that. And they f accidentally free Winifred, Sarah, and Mary from hell by switching places with Max, Alice, and Danny. So three of them are now in hell, where the Sanderson sisters should be. Um, but they managed to get away Isabella gets turned into a dog. Spoiler, there's gonna be, I should have mentioned this before, but there's gonna be a lot of spoilers by watching this, or reading this, uh, watching this video. Man, my mind's just not here today. Okay, re <laughs> okay. watching this video, um, it's 
pretty much review about what I take on the book. Um, but so they run to a cemetery because, like you find out in um, the movie, it's hollow ground, which you can't step foot on there, where they meet three ghosts: Elizabeth's ghost, Binks, and Emily's ghost, because they're gonna help. You find out Binks was the ghost they were originally talking to, trying to warn them to leave because he didn't want them to be brought back, obviously. And um, so, um, but it's too late, and um, so, and they find out that unlike this is since this is a different spell they used in the first one, unless they um, um, s reverse it by time the sun comes up instead of it which is going bye bye like they did in the first one um it makes everything permanent poppy family will be in hell forever and the San Francisco Sanderson sisters will be out forever so they have to do so they have to figure out what to do um and Elizabeth tells them about this um blood moonstone which her mother gave her to protect from evil um, but her sisters never knew that she had it and um, they have to find it because it was the only way to stop it this um, Elizabeth tells them the last time she remembers it being there um, but um, while they're talking Poppy gets a phone call from Isabella which doesn't make any sense because Isabella's right there and a dog turns out she left her phone and Sarah managed to find her phone managed to figure out how to work it because it was very confusing to figure out how to work it first for these 300 year old ghosts or witches whatever um obviously you know they don't understand a lot of the new technology but so she started calling everyone in town through Isabella's phone and doing this singing and tr turning them into mindless zombies pretty much to do their dirty work and it's like they didn't have any control what they do. All they knew is that they had to find Winifred's spell book, which this group also had, and um, uh, the Blood Moonstone, which they do not have yet. Um, um, Bix and Emily are pretty much just um, a guide. They are only here a few there, here and there. Elizabeth's on a lot because she kind of helps them a little bit more. Um, but, um, uh, they try to talk to Principal Taylor, um, which is Katie's dad, and he doesn't want to have anything to do with this because he's mad at Max for just leaving him, and, um, and he doesn't want anything to do with the witches again because that terrified him because of what happened last time. But he, they run into his daughter, and um, she doesn't know what's happening because her best friend has been turned, and so has the rest of her soccer team. And so um, she ends up helping them, even though she didn't want to, because she wanted to help save her friends. Um, so she has a car, so they drove, and they went to this tiny island just outside of Salem, I think, um, where the blood moons one should be. And um, they're looking for it there when Isabella um, talks, and then. Um, as a dog and he learns more of what's going on about everything and um so um and lightning keeps happening like, keeps coming near Isabella and um uh which is important for later on but they eventually find the blood moonstone on the island and a lot of things happen. I don't want to tell you everything because I don't want to spoil it. I just, um, too much, you know. Um, it, it's not an easy feat like the first time. I mean, they get the Blood Moonstone. Um, the good guys get it back, obviously, Poppy and her friends. Um, they were able to use more innocence to get more witches from hell by switching them off because she got her spell book back, too. Um, they even brought back Winifred, Sarah, Mary, and Elizabeth's mother, who um, said there's only one person who can be like the ruler of the world, and it's gonna be her. And you know, it's not gonna be a family thing; it's gonna be her. Um, 
and um, turns out she only wanted Elizabeth to carry a stone so no other evil could get it because she did want to get it um, and Elizabeth felt fooled by that but um, turns out um, because um, pa pa not Poppy, uh, Isabella is a descendant of um, Elizabeth, she's a witch too and she has magic um, and that's what the line you can't have any from before. It was her coming into her powers, I guess you can say. Um, and so they decided to, um, destroy the stone. They couldn't figure out how until they decided, hey, let's try Isabella's powers. But Elizabeth warned that it could take out all of Salem, so they had, so they came up with a plan of put throwing it over the ocean and then um, zapping it um, and then it would, wouldn't hurt anyone. Um, this was actually a really good book, you know, um, and I loved it. Kind of started off slow, but so did the first movie, you know. You know, I mean, this movie didn't start out with like 300 years ago where it shows like what happened with the Andersons because we already know all that. Um, it started off with Poppy at school, you know, um, and Travis and then Isabella and Katie kind of give you a feel of all the characters. You know, it didn't really get good until they decided to go to the Sanderson's house. Like in the movie, that's when it gets really good when they go to the Sanderson house and bring back the witches. Um, Show, keep showing Sanderson's sisters. Those parts were a little bit boring. I liked more of the action. But Mary even sang a song um, about it being her time because she was tired of being in Winifred's shadow, of doing everything Winifred says, and then get the, and then getting yelled at for it. Um, so, so she sang about how it's finally going to be her time and she's going to have her way or whatever. Um, But yeah, um, let's see. But Katie and Isabel, uh, Katie, and, um, turns out Isabel used to be friends with Katie. Um, and, um, that's why Katie was picking on, um, Poppy this past year because she was jealous, but Isabella and Katie kind of made amends to sort of Katie and Poppy, so everything seemed all right. Um, they were all friends by the end. Um, um, before the spells cap finished, she did. Um, Isabella did become human again. Um, Elizabeth um, thought of a way to use both their magic to turn her into human and it worked so she was able to be human too for the final plan so they all went to the island where there's a lighthouse and the, I love the final fight um, and there's a lot of witches um, Katie, they're all fighting Katie ends up going to hell and replaced by um, and that's how they brought the mother back by putting Katie in hell um, and then Travis ends up going to hell for a short time too and another witch um, takes his place um, and um, uh, that's pretty fun. but um, so uh, it was all left to Isabella and Poppy the witches got the blood moon zone again because Isabella dropped or Poppy dropped it and she was hanging off the lighthouse and she was trying to reach for it because it was on a ledge so it wasn't that far out of reach but um, Isabella was pleading saying we can get it later just please come help let me help you up I can't lose you like I said they're a really cute ship and I ship it a lot <laughs> um, you know and I think you know I actually have read that many romances in books where there's two girls or two guys I see it a lot in movies and TV shows these days um, which makes me happy but um, uh, what I love about this is because um, most relationships that you do see 
with a gay couple, a lesbian couple. It's like there's this huge coming out story and it's like for once I would like to see one where it was just kind of known, you know, it's like no one really came out, it's just something that was there and it's just accepted and it just happens, you know? It's like it's just it's just there, you know? And that's one thing I love because um near the beginning um Poppy and Jarvis is talking and then they kind of nonchalantly mentioned how Isabella is Poppy's crush and um, it came and it just it was just there it's like something just, just that's just known you know it's just known that Poppy's a lesbian and I just didn't really mention if Isabella is yet that you don't find out how she truly feels until near the end um, well actually it's kind of obvious because she did just start hanging out with Poppy and Travis for no apparent reason and she seemed closer to Poppy and she liked and she was upset when Poppy was upset she was upset even she was even more upset when she was the one that caused it so it was just kind of I think so I didn't know how strong her feelings for her was but I did kind of think she might have feel something for um Poppy by the way she acted um you know, and then when the end, when they finally got together, I was so happy, I was squealing. But anyways, um, yeah, so, um, eventually, Poppy was able to throw the blood moonstone over the water, and they were able to wait for the right period of time, and Isabella was able to, um, zap it with her magic. And then it's kind of backfired, well, it didn't backfire, it just kind of backlash, I guess is the right word to use, where it came back, and hit Isabella. It didn't kill her or anything, probably because she is a witch if she was human it might have, but she kind of toppled over the lighthouse and Poppy had to rush over to save her. Um, and she did. Um, uh, you know, and then um, everyone started coming back and um, and the witches started leaving again. And then um, Poppy looked over looking for um, they they both stayed there for a moment saying how happy they were to be together to be see each other um, they haven't gotten officially together yet but they will I'll get to that but um, she was looking everywhere for Travis Travis was the first thing on her mind Travis is her best friend and I love that friendship too I should probably mention that I love that friendship you know he's kind of a moron but in a kind of a what's the right word like good way I guess but um, he says whatever's on his mind some of the crap that comes out of his mouth is just hilarious He's funny, but he, um, uh, I lost my train of thought again, um, but, um, he, he teases her, she teases him, and I, I love the friendship, I do, but, um, she finally hears his voice and finds him, so she grabs Isabel's hands and they run out of the lighthouse and she hugs him, Katie joins and everything seems good, then Poppy hears, um, finds her parents and, um, um, she reunites with him and it's all really nice and really sweet, you know, um, but, um, uh, where did I go? Once again, wow, okay, <laughs> but, um, yeah, and then uh, Isabella asked to talk to Poppy and she was like, I'm really sorry, this was my idea, and Poppy's like, yeah, but I no one wanted to go through with it, and Isabella's like, this is really hard, I'm not good at this, and Poppy's like, oh, come on, you're Isabella, you're good at everything, because she has this whole high esteem of Isabella, thinking she's, like, this perfect person and stuff, and, um, and then, let's see if I, um, and then it was just really sweet what Isabella tells her, she's like, um, um, she was like, I'm really glad, and Poppy, Pop, wait, Papa mentioned why she, she, that she was um, still don't know doesn't understand why she, Isabel's been hanging out with her and Travis this past year. She's like, D don't you get it? You're you're really amazing. You're so brave and confident and sweet and this and that and this and that. And I guess what I'm trying to say is I really like you. And then um, she kisses her and then Poppy's like, I really really like you too. And it's just so sweet because I ship it. Um, and uh, yeah, I love Poppy and Isabella's relationship. I love Poppy and uh, Travis's relationship. I love how Poppy and Katie became friends. They were they started out enemies, became friends. Um, but yeah, they had a nice kiss. Poppy and Isabella did, um, and then they all left. 
And then um, later on, they went to the graveyard again because Isabel wanted to talk to um, Elizabeth. And then Danny went with him to keep an eye on them, I guess. Um, but Binks and Emily showed up, which made Danny happy because she hasn't seen Binks in how long now? Like, you know, she got really close to that cat, which she's not a cat anymore, but that's besides the point. Um, but Isabella got to talk to Elizabeth one last time. And, um, and then uh, this bro book broke me though because the very end is still upsetting and I don't think I'll ever get over it. Never, ever. Um, but it's basically about, uh, it's this guy go walking down, it's been a year later, this guy's walking down Salem and um, he sees a missing woman thing. She's been missing for a year, which would be around the same time all the hell things happen. And then this guy looks at it and he's like, thank you for taking my place. Cause he's ba cause it's basically saying he's a warlock who, um, he's a warlock who um, didn't go back to hell once everything finished, I guess. And she's still there taking his place and no one knows that. Um, and then, um, he goes to a graveyard where he has one of his spell book, which is still missing. Um, he's missing again, I should say. And he decides to say spell, and the spell is almost word for word for a spell that's used in the movie, except for a couple of details. Let me find it. Um, here, unfaithful, unfaithful brother, long since dead. De Deep asleep in my, thy warmy bed, wiggle thy toes, open thine eyes, twist thy fingers toward the sky. See that part? Um, wiggle thy toes, open thine eyes, twist thy fingers towards the sky. Isn't I think that's the spell word for you to turn beings into a cat. I might be wrong, but I think so. And then it said, Life is sweet, be not shy, on thy feet, so saith I, which is also what she said in the spell. Um, but, um, yeah, and then the graveyard started quaking, like, oh, wait, no, 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 that's the spell Winfred said, um, to bring Billy back, because that's what he did, he brought Billy back, because this is apparently Billy's brother. So I don't know if he's a warlock or what, but he escaped hell, I guess, and that girl's taking his place, and he brings back Billy, who comes out, and that's how it ends. It says, the teen witch grins. Yeah, he's a witch. Welcome back, Billy. Great things await. And that's how it ends. I'm like, oh my gosh, they need to make a next book. They haven't yet, and they need to because I need to know what happens because it's not over because Billy's back and he's good and he's going to stop his brother. He's going to help the good guys. He's going to reunite with Max Allison and Danny. He's going to help Binks and Emily and Elizabeth. He's going to help Poppy and Isabella. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I got very emotional, as you can see. But I'm not, I, I just, I can't, this is too much. But I love Poppy, she's my favorite character. Um, and I'm glad Binks and Emily came back, especially Binks, I like him. And I'm glad they kind of mentioned Billy in the end, he comes back, but no one's seen him yet because he's had his brother and I'm still upset. I'm so upset because I need more and I, I don't, I, I can't, it's just too much, but uh, I didn't like Petey at first, she grew on me, she's still not one of my favorite characters, I love Poppy, Isabella, and Travis, and I love their friendship dynamic, I love Poppy's friendship with Travis, her relationship with uh, Isabella, that's her name, right, yeah, okay, um, and I kind of like that they added Elizabeth, like, you know, there's another sister and she's not evil. So uh, Elizabeth always kind of didn't want to use her magic because she was afraid it would like, she would end up like her sisters. So she tried to deny it. Um, but she found out that just because they're all related doesn't mean she's like them or they're like her. But yeah, I'm still upset because I need another book because I need to know what happens because this, this girl's in hell, this, wi this warlock is out and free. And he right ri risen Billy. Billy helped Max Allison and Danny last time. So this, unless he doesn't know that, why would he bring Billy back to help him in some evil doing? If you know, because Billy's good. You know, he he's a good person. He wants to help the world, not destroy it. 
and if this war lets come back, the question is, is he going to bring Santa's sisters back? Or is it just going to be him and Billy? And him have to try and get Billy to help him, and Billy try to get him to stop being evil. Who knows? And if you know, if they make it the next one, it doesn't mean they will. I really hope they do, because I have to know how it goes. But this is a terrible way to end it, and now I broke it. Okay, well that's all. Please like and subscribe and comment. Um, if you've read this book, did you like it? What did you think? Um, and anything about this book, pretty much. Um, until next time.